Good evening, everyone. I would like to welcome you all to the opening lecture of this spring semester sliver lecture series. And um, I'm Givan Jose. For those of you who don't know me, assistant professor at Studio Lynn. My colleagues, Justin Diles and Kelly Kazilisko and Professor Priggs are organizing the series. And tonight we have a very special guest from China, uh, Mr. Ma Yangsong. He graduated from Beijing Institute of Civil Engineering and Architecture. He attended Yale University after receiving the American Institute of Architects Scholarship for Advanced Architecture Research in 2001, and also holds a master's degree from Yale. We have not overlapped, but I've been personally following the works of Ma and Matt Architects since I attended the same institution myself. Their work holds a very important place in the body of a new generation of architects engaged with shaping of contemporary design culture. Their work is relentlessly imaginative and relevant. Their practice is also one of those rare young practices that have the pedigree to test their ideas in built form, as you will soon see in the lecture. Mr. Ma has since taught architecture at the Central Academy of Fine Arts in Beijing, was awarded the 2006 Architecture League Young Architects Award in New York, in 2008, he was selected as one of the 20 most influential young architects today by Icon Magazine. And Fast Company named him one of the 10 most creative people in architecture in 2009. In 2010, he became the first architect from China to receive a Reba Fellowship. Especially in the light of the current honoring of Wang Xu with the Prisker Prize, I believe that it is ever more important to pay more attention to the input of Chinese architects to the contemporary architecture culture. Although the work of Matt is international in this conception on content, their testing ground for their architectural experiments so far has been primarily China, and we would love to see examples of that, those tonight. Mr. Ma is certainly one of the leading voices of my generation of architects, and it is my pleasure to host him here at the Yang Avanta tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Ma Yang. <coughs> It's my honor to be here. I've been to Vienna several times. I knew this, this school is a very good school, but I, ne I never got the invitation to be here. So today I'm happy to speak here. I'm going to uh, introduce some works we have done in past uh, seven years. Um, this is the first time showing this. It's a, like, uh, not even our office work, it's uh, my student work. It's, uh, uh, it was almost 10 years ago, I was in school, and uh, that was after 9-11, so we were proposing, you know, every, everyone proposing something for the World Trade Center in New York. So this was my proposal like, in 2002. I was learning Maya and you know, all this kind of program, so maybe you see those things. But 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 then later, I in, during these ten years, I I keep finding new things from this image. I keep asking myself why I'm doing why I did this because I remember, you know, at that time I couldn't uh, find the best solution for this uh, project. I almost uh, dreamed, uh, you know, what 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 this new World Trade Center is supposed to be. So I dreamed that this like cloud like, structure floating above all the high rise. <coughs> then I, I did this. Then later, I, I I find this actually built up a dialogue between modern city and uh, and uh, a kind of new thinking. Like I because I. Like, as a student, you do something, you think this for the future, better future, but what this better future means, I think that's <clears throat> something interesting. And later, uh, actually, that was funny. Um, last year, there's a client come to my office, says, I, he said, I, I saw this picture by you uh, like nine, ten years ago. And I really like it. I haven't seen you build this uh, till now, and uh, I want to build this. 
and, and uh, I was so happy as a Chinese client, they're so crazy, they want to, they can build anything. <laughs> and then I, I, we talk about almost like two hours, and, and then in the end, he said, he said that the building on the front, he wants to build. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was the really funny thing. So on this cloud, we had, we, I, I, I was, this, I was trying this Photoshop job, making this uh, island cover the site of the uh, of the Ground Zero, and I have this uh, park, uh, green park on the top. So I, I, I guess I, I forget why why I did this, but uh, I guess I I want to express the idea of nature in this uh, high density urban situation. I want something horizontal rather than vertical. I want uh, something you know, uh, life, organic, rather than boxes. So I think that was a simple idea. Uh, but later I, f I find this feeling uh, stronger and stronger towards the modern cities. And this, this uh, I, uh, a big, uh, photograph I found later actually was done in 1996. Uh, by a Chinese art artist, he went to New York. He did this uh, um, fire uh, fireworks, and he took a photo. That was uh, before 9/11. You can see the twin tower was still there. I think this inspired the, the terrorist somehow. Uh, but I, as I think, as an artist, as individual, I found this uh, this photo to, is very powerful because uh, he's very like. Uh, one of us is very um, small a uh, person, and he's he's, he's a new uh, in this uh, in this big city. I think he's questioning um, this the power of the modern cities. So he, he, he everyone is impressed by by New York. I right? see this big skyscraper, you know, very very powerful. But I think he's questioning. I think I, I read this image. I think he wants to ask us what the future is supposed to be for, for our future city, because all these buildings was built uh, for uh, because of capitalism or or power. So the, those high rise somehow become the memorial of the power and the capital. They're not not really about people, about human. And uh, I want to show a, a early project um, we designed for fish. It's a, actually a fish tank. It's a it's a house for fish. We why we start to design this because these photos you can see the, the those fish in this cubic fish tank they they, they act weird. Uh, they always at the corner. Uh, they always hit, hit the wall of the fish tank. They look like this. So, I, so we, we actually got this fish tank for free. We bought a fish and they give us this free fish tank. I, maybe the fish tank was so cheap, uh, so they can give it for free. That's the, the fish also cheap. Um, it's cheap because uh, the mass production behind the, this product is cubic, it's very easy to produce. <clears throat> Maybe same as modern buildings, modern architecture. Uh, house is a machine for living, that's a very famous uh, motto in architecture. And all these uh, towers, all these uh, big uh, machines, uh, they're all about uh, uh, um, quantity and power and uh, duplications, <clears throat> but less about people inside. So we de decided to, 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 to change this uh, cubic fish tank. So this is our new model for the fish tank. And then we actually produced one like this. It's still cubic, but this start to transform to something else. And we start to bring the, this outer surface into the space and creating a, a more um, complex 
uh, organization in, in this space. So there's a new fish tank. And this actually a very early exhibition we were involved to, sh to we were, we're supposed to show some architecture, but, but we didn't have any. So we have the fish tank, and we put the people there, so this look like an architecture model. And then we have a fish inside. That looked really funny. We have a fish, they're, uh, they're bigger than people. And so actually, they're, but in reality, people, they don't care fish, right? They die, you throw away, buy new fish. <coughs> Maybe, maybe human, they have the same position in the city, like nobody care about you. Like nobody can, can really decide what kind of space, what kind of uh, environment you want to live, right? Because uh, you have no control in the city. So I think this uh, uh, smaller people are interesting. But also we don't know if the fish tank, this new fish tank is uh, better or worse because those fish they don't talk we don't we don't know <laughs> but but I think it's similar to, 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 to people people talk but people don't know what they're talking about <laughs> the same and uh, people talking about democracy you ask them why they, they what they want they, they don't know what they want so I, I think it's interesting in this project, we find a position to be a designer, right? Because every designer, they like architect, they sign their contract with uh, powerful people, rich people. Right? That's why we are not being respected because because they 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 hire lawyer or doctor because they need them. When they hire architect, they they, they feel very good uh, because they're rich. They're so, so, but, but the building we produced, in the end, it belongs to the public. A lot of people will use your building. So I think later we find that's interesting. In this fish tank, there's one party missing. Because we as a designer, we design what we think is good for fish. And fish, you don't know, they don't talk. But there's a one party missing. Because we, we are not supposed to pay for the production. Um, in reality, some, you have to make the powerful people or rich people, they pay for your ideas. <coughs> so this project went as the, the architecture league, the architects world. That was funny because we didn't have an archi uh, architecture. Uh, we don't have a building project. But I think we find some interesting um, game in architecture. And later we start to try to do some big buildings because we are in China, we're supposed to do big things. And there, there was a competition like this to design towers. And we were uh, just like you, like very young, inexperienced students, but, but uh, we decided to try. You can see the, mo uh, the picture at the background, a lot of uh, high-rise, that was one of the big cities in, in China, and they wanted to build a high-rise. They wanted to do a competition for design high-rise uh, 400 meter tall. But the competition says architects can propose a proper height. Like this. Actually, there's no limit. It's very clear who designed higher building get a better chance to win. So we, we, we proposed 800 meters. <laughs> so we thought maybe this get, get a better chance. It's actually still 400 meters. It's, it's 400 meters up and, the, and then coming down. So the, the top of the tower come back to the ground. So we call this 800 meter. It's actually two towers, they connect on the top and the middle. We, we saw this better than typical tower because that kind of creating a kind of complicity in the, in the, <coughs> in the tower. You can see that the, the number one on the, on the right is a typical high rise. No matter what uh, uh, shape it is, the inside is uh, every floor same. Uh, repeat, repeat, repeat. 
as a machine. <coughs> so in our program, uh, in our diagram, we have uh, we bring the public uh, activity to the middle of the tower. So from here, the people from the four parts of the building they can meet in the middle. On the top of the tower, we propose this moving vehicle, like sightseeing. So we saw maybe this moving thing can be very interesting in, in the city in the, for the skyline. And we even did the, um, a section look like a, a, a real, real building. That will be lost, of course, because the first diagram already made them sad. We don't like to uh, compete in height because I, it's, I think it's, uh, <coughs> it's like every city now in, in China and the Middle East, they, they want a height. They, they think the height is a symbol of the, of the power. So, but I think, I think it's uh, stupid to, to compete that because before you, you complete your building, some other city will already propose to announce another higher one. And this is a funny, this is a, a competition we won last year in Beijing. We proposed something very similar to, 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 that, uh, to that building. We have also connection on the top and this moving vehicle. And we won this competition because we didn't uh, show that, that funny diagram. I think that's, that was important, how, the, how, how you set up this uh, dialogue, how you, how you communicate. Um, but anyway, I, I, uh, we, we did a lot of competition uh, at the early time, and we lost a lot of them. And finally, we, we won this one. Uh, this one was... Uh, the first uh, international competition we did. Um, because we did a lot of competition in China, it was always a weird experience. We very hardly to win them. And sometimes we win, and they just tell you you win, and then there's no news after. And this one was the open, so everyone can, can fight. So we, we just feel very lucky to be selected. There was an apartment tower uh, in Toronto. That was a funny picture I found on the newspaper after, after uh, we submit the first round. And there were f six finalists. And, uh, and there are already a lot of a discussion about our proposal uh, in Toronto. You can, I think this tells the story very, in a very uh, interesting way. They have all the uh, big uh, concrete box at the background, uh, which you, you can see those kind of city or towers everywhere in, in China, in, in North America, a lot of cities look like that. And so this building look, uh, they say it's sexy. They ask, they ask why your building looks sexy. I, as I didn't try to make the building sexy. But uh, they, maybe because they like the sexy uh, building. And they named the building Marilyn Monroe. Because they think this will look like a woman. Um, so they call this uh, Monroe Towers now. And because they, maybe they like Monroe better than the building. So they, the, the marketing would become extremely successful. They sold out the whole tower in one day, and they, they call us to design the second one. So in the end, we have two towers. <laughs> and they said, you don't have to come, we just copy your, we just use your, build, uh, your, your, your construction drawing, and we can build two towers. But we said, you cannot have two Marilyn models standing there. <laughs> so in the end, we designed the second one uh, uh, slightly different. And those are the, the floor plans. And they started building those towers. 
the structure is quite easy because they want to control the the cost. We, we first we first uh, trying to make a column like twist twist column like following the shape, but uh, it's too expensive. So we have to change to a concrete shear wall system. So that's why we have a, why we have a lot of uh, plants because every plant is different. The end. But we propose all the balcony. So on every floor, they have a very uh, nice view. They have a balcony space, and those balcony also provide provide the sun shading very naturally. So the building. Well, I think two towers are more interesting than one. Because one is uh, still about the shape and, and this sculpture, but two tower uh, made urban space. When you're in this environment or you, you walk in between the towers, you feel this whole space is like, uh, moving. It's quite a dynamic. Here, the, during, the, during the construction, they start to um, install the, the glasses. So again, in, in order to control the cost, we have to using flat, uh, flat uh, glass on every floor, and we have to use the uh, window system in, in, uh, instead of a curtain wall system. So there's a no 3D curve at anywhere in this room. From different angles. I like this. View a lot because it, sh it shows the the contrast between this tower and the typical towers. Here a view you see from the existing tower they have. Uh, we look out to the city. You see this uh, space in between two towers. I'm curious to to see when the, the building completes, and when people move in and they can look at each other from their balconies. Could be very dramatic. <clears throat> Here you can the, the view on the on the right is the view you look up. You can see all the glass are flat. It's a bird view. This picture is blur because I found on the internet. I found a lot of a picture on the internet because Toronto is too far. I don't go often. Uh, a lot of people, they, they take a weird picture. <coughs> this one is the best, so I, I, I don't show other <coughs> weird pictures. But I think it's a, it's a, it, it feels nice, like people from the place, they enjoy the building and they love to interact. It's a different, there's some joy from the, from the local kids. They, they, they capture their shape very accurate. They know the two towers are different. <laughs> Here's a, a, a museum uh, we are building, uh, we, we, we just finished in, in China. This is a master plan uh, in, in one of the Chinese cities. This city called uh, Erdos in the Inner Mongolia. Uh, there, this master plan you can actually see uh, in, in many Chinese cities. It's very similar to have a big plaza in the middle called the Citizen Plaza uh, without citizen in there. <laughs> and three, three cultural buildings around the plaza, uh, four of them around the plaza, opera, museum, library, and maybe cultural center, every city. And, uh, and the city hall um, on the corner left left corner, which is always the most powerful building in every city. So government, they work there. And this is a photo I, I took in 2004, 2004, the first time I went there. I, I was standing on the roof of this government building. Just look at the future city. You can see the road. You know, this was a desert. A, Wild, very wild landscape. This is a one year later, two years. So the city is big, and now if I don't have a, the latest photo, but they already have a lot of uh, high-rise there. 
That was crazy. Uh, we we are doing a we we build a museum there. That was a competition. <clears throat> Only on a clean sheet of paper can the newest and most beautiful picture be drawn. I think I think architects has a very difficult time to to to, to understand this because we always talking about the context. But when you go somewhere uh, without contact, you don't know what's, you know there's some building will be next to your building, but you, you don't know what kind of building, or how close they, they should, they are located to your building, what's the relationship. It's all uncertain. So I was inspired by this. Uh, I think this is a really uh, like no context. Uh, this, Thing can can put anywhere. Right. So, this is a Fuller, Mr. Fuller's dorm covered Manhattan Island, and I remember I saw this in a uh, in a movie actually, in this science fiction movie. It's a story is about the the end of the world. The, the Earth is full of virus. I forget the name of the movie, and people can can only survive inside the bubble. And some hero come out from the bubble and save some other people, something like that. But anyway, the bubble is a basic architecture. It's a providing protection right, to people. But at the same time, it's a separating the inside outside. It's isolating the the inside from outside. So I saw maybe that's something we need uh, because we don't know uh, the our context. Um, Maybe all full, full of virus, so we should we should also only concentrate on the inside, which is the, the museum. So we build this bubble. Um, it's uh, I don't I don't know why we, this shape is a very uh, random shape. It's no meaning. Uh, just trying to make a, a shell to cover. Um, cover the, what happened uh, in, inside. At the same time, from, from the outside, it's very abstract. It's a, even have a little reflection. And we, we also create, create this uh, landscape. <coughs> Look like a desert. I think that was the only context I can feel when I first went there, first time I saw this desert. I think the, the nature <laughs> landscape was so powerful. <coughs> So we we creating this uh, 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 very pure uh, stone surface without grass, without flower, without trees. So it looks like uh, this metal uh, spaceship landing on a crash on the desert or something. Here's the entrance to to the inside. The inside. Uh, we mainly have a, a solid walls. We only have a two uh, openings. One, like we, we, we cut, we, we cut the this shape, and then we have this big opening to bring natural light and the direct sunlight into the space. Here is a is a is office research part uh, garden, and here is another. Uh, space, which is main space, connect the two uh, entrance uh, on the front of the building, uh, another one on the rear of the building. So the two entrances actually uh, uh, have to, 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 to link, uh, 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 make uh, this uh, lobby to connect these two entrances. And this lobby feels like a canyon, like a Grand Canyon space. In, in, in this space, you have a very nice uh, natural light. There is no, no artificial light required. Here's another space. And we have the bridges connect the, 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 the two parts of the gallery uh, to be the circulation of the, of the museum. So you, 
but you can walk through the museum in this canyon-like space without entering uh, any exhibition hall. You can also enter it. When, you, when you're touring a, a, a exhibition, then when you come out, then you, you will walk on the bridge, which is on the center of the, of the building. Something like this. So that was the... That was the... Uh, uh, this was uh, uh, like a project in 2005 we did. At that moment, the place was really poor. Not poor, they, they have money, but, but the city is really poor. No, no anything look nice. Uh, but they have a very strong desire to do something new. I think that was interesting when we see them as a local culture. In Mongolia, we, we know it's a different culture than the, our main cultures. We always judge them local culture, local culture. But they don't see them as a local culture. They want something um, different. That was uh, interesting for us. Here's another museum or building in the north part of China called uh, Harbin. Harbin is, uh, was, was, was the first uh, international city in China, was very uh, old one. And it's a very cold place. So again, we used the metal and uh, a solid, uh, solid object. We only open some, some smaller uh, roof light. Here's a model. So it's a very solid and very long uh, object. It's actually 200 meter long. They want to design two museums. And uh, we suggest them to make a one because I think as a museum, you need a, in China, you need a certain size so people, people can, can tour the two museums without any stop. Here you see that there's a lobby in the middle and a two museum program on, on the two side. And the, and the yellow part is a lights, the lighting cones uh, to the space. It's a very long building, so uh, we, we have to make a lot of sections. So all the this, all this section shows different uh, quality of the space. And those space, they actually continue, they're not isolated. Here's a one space from inside. You can see the natural light. And here you can see this space, how this space is connected to the space beyond. Here you can see the layers of the space. You're in the one exhibition hall, and you can see a, a bright space um, outside the hall. And then you see another darker space um, further away. Here's the outside of the building. <coughs> it uh, looks like the tower lying on the ground. But, uh, you're trying to capture the, this moment that something in between solid and the liquid. I think it's very, could be, sens could be very sensitive feeling to see these um, shapes. This is the structure of the building. Here is the, to see the space start to take shape. <coughs> and we use the stainless, stainless steel to cover the whole building. You can see small curves. You can see the residential building be behind our building. It's crazy. And then we we get another chance to, 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 be, to, to, to build another project in the same city. Um, what's a funny story because we designed this building and during one meeting this mayor came to the meeting and asked us to make this building made uh, by wood. I said no, I cannot do this in wood. I didn't know he was mayor. 
So he didn't say anything more. And later I found he was mayor. I think he, he enjoyed the feeling to be rejected. So he, <laughs> he wanted another one. I think here we also we, we're trying to tell him the truth because you can see this uh, site is uh, even more beautiful. They have a wetland and uh, they have a city not far from the wetland. But they want to build Oprah House in here. <coughs> but, but they want to build Oprah House, an uh, art uh, uh, culture center and uh, a museum. Three buildings. But, but later we said, we said it's too, too many buildings. We should cancel one. And then he canceled one. We want to make something like this. This is a photograph you took there. They have a very long winter and they have a lot of snow and this kind of landscape. So we did decide to make something look like a, like a snow mountain. So this is Oprah house. And uh, that's the cultural center. So we cancel the museum. I said, you have another museum, you don't need the one here. So here you have a, a plaza. And, uh, and, the, and, and the lake in between two towers, uh, between two buildings. And you have a, a, the wetland surround this plaza. So these two, uh, these two buildings is actually one continuous strip. These white walls are actually very continuous. And then continue to the, to the ground and become bridge cross the river and cross the lake and become another mountain. And uh, you can literally walk on the mountain. There be, be, make this a pass on the facade of the building so you can actually walk uh, on this pass and climb onto the mountain to the rooftop and look at the wetland surrounding. <clears throat> There's a bridge connect the two buildings. And the lobby. Again, we want a lot of uh, natural light in, in, in the space. <clears throat> and we bring also some natural light into the auditorium. Here you can see the pass. And <clears throat> And this is uh, South China. Uh, China is quite big. This is a, more like a tropical uh, climate. It's different. The landscape is different. Mountain look different. And here we designed one uh, building. Look like this. It's a, like a flat mountain. It's basically a, a wall. Uh, but the profile looks like a natural mountain. <coughs> We have a terrace on the on the roof uh, on the rooftop, and then we have this holes in the building. But it's big. It's uh, 800 meter long, 100 meter tall. So it's uh, it's uh, more or less uh, like a mini master plan project. It's a lot of people live here. Uh, we we did we didn't we were not trained as master planners. So we have to design a building. So one building um, actually uh, linked the two two sides. We have a one street go through in the middle. This this is uh, this is the the wall. Um, we call this wall. Fake hills because it's, a, it's not a real, it's a fake. Um, but somehow it shows shows a sense of nature. It's it's the, the curve is a, is a, the profile of the mountain is a, how do you say it's, it's a weird. It's not it's not perfect. It's not beautiful. But I, I find some it's interesting to find that is. A, random curve right, directly translate from your hand sketch into a computer into a building. I mean, 
it's interesting because building it become become emotional. I think that's I find that's interesting also in the traditional Chinese gardens. There are a lot of things imperfect, imperfect. It's about imperfection. But anyway, here we push all the density into one wall, so in, then we can free a lot of space in front of the building. And we can provide a lot of a public space in front of the building. And this is the construction. This building is half done. Um, it's the uh, um, it's it's huge. So some people they're happy, some people are not happy. Uh, there's argument, but I think I think there's a question here because when I, during the design process we, we test. Uh, the density of the site. If we design a, a typical tower, cubic tower, 100 meter tall, we have to put uh, 16 towers in this site. So it's huge. It's like a mini city. And this kind of a, a challenge happens everywhere in China. There's no small development. You design, you gotta design this big. So every place, you have to deal with the density. So the question is not about build building or not building. It's about how you build a building, how you deal with the density. I think here was a, a test, and and this is another example. Uh, it's a beautiful. These are real mountains. This is a beautiful mountains and lakes. And we design something in the mountains. <coughs> At the beginning, we were hesitating because I think any architects, they, when they see beautiful scene, they, they will love it. But at the same time, anything you do is a crime. Because people will hate it because the, the beautiful mountains was there. But, but I have to do something because the architects have to do something. Uh, density problem, again. They want to build a uh, two tower, 120,000 square meter. So it's like probably two tower, each one 150 meter tall, this side. So we actually, we suggest them to do this. Multiple buildings blend into the mountain landscape. But I think the, the, the building in the middle is still too big. Um, and actually we cut their, the total uh, program in half. This is not, this is like 70%, uh, 70,000 square meter. <laughs> but since we did the whole master plan, so we, we put the other, we, we convinced them to put some program at the later phase. But anyway, it's uh, again deal with, uh, deal with uh, the density. This many building, we have to find a way to, to, to blend into the contour lines, to, to, you know, to, to, to the slopes. But they, they, want, they all want to have uh, the, the lake view. So, so we put on the lake side of the mountain. And then it's not enough. One, one layer is not enough. So we have another tower, smaller tower, closer to the lake. But, but then we have to make a bridge. So so the people can only go to that building from the bridge to the top floor and come down to the to the apartment. So here is the the look of the, the bridge. You can see the tea field uh, there. Uh, it's very nice. And then we I want to again try this uh, kind of uh, random curves in the building. This literally come from the sketch. So we scan those sketch, we follow them and they build it. So we want to make this an imperfection of the geometry. The building look a little messy, but I think 
that's how nature looks like. Here is a bridge, as you cross the bridge, you approach this pavilion and you go into the core, go down to your apartments. You can see the very nice mountain here. And talking about the relationship between architecture and the nature, which we find in a lot of our project. And this is a very early project. We, uh, we did a pavilion, uh, the water. It's a one, it's very uh, small space. One roof, look like this. It was a bridge across the uh, across the lake, and we built the building in the middle of the bridge. And we have this underwater pass approach building, something like this. So we, we manipulate the surface a little bit to create this to. To make to define a space in, uh, under the under the roof, and uh, we actually creating a path through the building. So you because the, the building built on the bridge, so you can see after the building was built, you can still walk through the bridge, walk through the building without entering the building. So there is outdoor space under the roof for people to walk. Here the path. So when you walk here, you can see the water and the lotus on the both sides. <coughs> here the path, you can go here, it's like a space, outdoor, the cover, and then you can go into the building, and then you can like, walk like that uh, in the smaller space, and when you uh, turn, it's a big space, you see the landscape beyond. On the left side, we lower the roof so you focus on the water surface instead of the upper housing. Yeah. Anyway, I think in this small building we try something like about how people feel in this kind of space, how they interact with the nature. <coughs> it's, and then it's funny, at that year we finished this building in 2005 probably. Uh, some people say this is a digital architecture because uh, there's some curve there. But I said there's no digital there. We, we just made a very simple model and uh, we print these uh, drawings. We cannot deliver the, 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 the 3D drawings to the site, so we have to translate the drawing into 2D and we print this 2D drawing one to one and we cut. We cut. Uh, the steel or something. So there's a very low tech. There's not uh, digital. And then later, uh, a Chinese old scholar come here and said, this is not digital. You know, he doesn't know what's digital. Uh, he said, this is a traditional Chinese pavilion. Then I found this interesting because I didn't know it was the Chinese pavilion. Just pavilion, they build on the water. But he said, when you walk in there, you can, you have different ways to look at the water and the, and the nature around you. When you move, your, your scenery is changing. So I found this interesting. Somehow, this traditional sense of this space is in the building. So we start to do some more research about this. Uh, about the traditional gardens and then uh, this is another project uh, we did in Tai we did in Taiwan it's a convention center but you don't tell it's a convention center they have a they have a hotel they have office they have a uh, convention center but we try to hide their program we don't want to show the identity of the building so we instead of want to create a group of the buildings. So they, they all look like a like <coughs> volcano mountain, right? Because, but we, this group thing, I think is very interesting too. In the traditional Chinese architecture, you never see single building. It's always about a group. And when you create a group, the space in between becomes so important. When you go into a courtyard, 
you know, like in, in, in the Chinese garden or even in the forbidden city, those buildings are not the most important thing, but you're always in certain space. I think here we try to do the same. We make a group of the mountains and and then we deal with the, the space in between. So this very much like actual mountain. We have a water at the lowest uh, level, we have uh, gardens in between them, we have a roof, rooftop, which is the, also the, the green gardens. And, uh, and this, creating this plaza in, in, this, uh, in, in between this mountain, uh, covered by water. When it's raining, they have a water, when it's not raining, it's a plaza. You can have a concert there. Anyway, this is uh, the organization of the, this, this garden space become very interesting. Inside the building, we also make a lot of uh, this kind of void. Uh, within each envelope, it's different. Sometimes it's a, a large space, sometimes it's a smaller space, hotel. Uh, this office, for example, we have a typical floor inside and, uh, and the balcony, and then we cover by sun, this sun shading skin. Here you can see the volume of the building is uh, quite big, but by doing the, the, these groups, you're actually creating an um, uh, environment rather than volume. So people actually they don't focus, they don't pay attention to the size of each building, but they will go into go into this environment. Here the skin we take this these Miyagi's clothes, we take inspired by that and making the skin of the building. And this rendering I like very much. It's a, it's when you're actually in the building because a mountain is doing this. And you cannot actually look at one building that you are in the space. So each space can, can have a different character. Here is a compare um, of different landscape. Um, on the left is French garden. You see the, the, the trees, they're very clean, they're very artificial. On the left, on the right, it's also artificial. Because this garden is a man-made garden, those stones, um, they're all like, collect from some river. <coughs> Sometimes people, they, they, they sculpture the stone. They think stone look, they shape the stone, in the, uh, and then they put the stone back to the river and wait like another 10, 20 years and take out. So they, they it's all artificial, but they try to uh, compose different elements, trees, water, stone, architecture, together as a whole environment to creating a continuous uh, experience in the space. So nothing is isolated. You cannot take that pavilion out of this context. I think I found that interesting. And, uh, and this artificial environment um, it's also um, linked to the literature, poem, music, and many other uh, formats of art. And also paintings. So I, 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 think, I think maybe it's a modern way to isolate you know, architecture, landscape, urban planning, all these things. Maybe they should, because they are supposed to be interior design, product design, they're supposed to be um, connected. And back to the modern city, density again, because we all know courtyard is nice, um, garden is nice, but now we cannot build gardens because we have so many people fighting for house. So in the city, we're, we're trying different ways to 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 deal with the, this principle. 
the lower part is a, is a building we were designing. It's a office building in Shanghai, near the airport. The upper part is uh, Zaha Hadi. It's uh, her building. Um, it's a, that building, you can see the scale. Although it's an organic language, the scale is horrible. It's a very, four very long walls. You can com compare to the other part of the city. So it's like a four scratch uh, into the in, into the city. <coughs> and on the other side of the bridge, uh, we work with the same developer, same program, same density, but we're trying to make a multiple levels of the the, the uh, parks. It's a roof parks actually. <coughs> and again, this is a uh, like Brandon drawing. I don't like uh, doing a lot of study. Um, I think only when you don't know what you want, you do a lot of study. So we do only one sketch, and then we do build. <laughs> and this, but you have to do the sketch when you have a feeling. Right? You, if you don't have a feeling, that's the this sketch problem. But uh, here we work on the roof. Uh, we put the gardens on the roof, lake on the roof. Uh, you can see the, the towers. This is actually in Europe, in Amsterdam. We did a competition there. Uh, but those buildings are all existing. Uh, where they call CBD, Central Business District. Uh, CBD always towers. In China, we're building CBD everywhere, in every city. And uh, they become the symbolic of modern uh, modern life. People think power means modern life. So, but here, it, it's, a, it's a little different. It's, um, because actually each tower is designed by a famous architect. But you don't tell. Uh, and they seems they really respect the architects um, because they named the tower after the architect's name. There is a tower called SOM, and that tower in the, the the white tower in the middle called the Ito Tower. They have a Ito's name on the main entrance. And here is the UN Studio, and there is a very ugly, low building. I think it's a by FOA. But by later they refuse to name after their own name um, because they have to all follow uh, one volume uh, and shape. So they all become facade designer. That's a pity because uh, it's, you can see all the building. They're they're all same. They're all the uh, cubic, so, so they can only do the facade. <coughs> I found this interesting diagram about the density. When you have towers, can we bring mountains into the city? We did some mountains before. So here, we're trying to, again, making mountains in Amsterdam. In Holland, they don't have a mountain. Um, and this client who hired us is interesting. Uh, it's a private owner. Their side is next to the next to those towers, and they they hate these towers. And uh, her father passed away, and they give and he give the whole prop, uh, property to her uh, to his daughter. My daughter says, all these towers look like a man in, in, suit, in uh, suits. They all were saying, the uh, city is about a man because all the buildings uh, are square. 
and she doesn't like that. She wants a female. <laughs> She's she she going to change the city. And then there's a mountain. And she got a big side. Side is almost big as the whole CBD. So we have to design a serious mountains. Yeah. And that's a highway from Amsterdam to the airport. And uh, I think that's uh, nice to, to do this mountain in, in, in Holland. And we even bring real, real mountain there. And inside the mountain you can have uh, maybe uh, some room, I don't know, some multi-purpose hall and the waterfall. The white mountain, I think mountains is what you see. But at the same time, you can create a, a different urban experience. You can see the valley space in between those mountains. Imagine you, you work in that CBD and you can come to this environment, and shops, and coffee, whatever. I think it's different. And uh, then the question is how nature form related to daily urban life, how people feel in this space. I think, I think that's about the, about the other product, we're talking about the nature. We, we like nature, we like the real nature, fake nature, artificial nature. But, but what, what's a people's emotional connection to the nature in big cities? Like people survive in the city, they take subway, you know, they, they go modern bars, hotels, but what, what kind of nature? can be in the city. I think that's, that's interests us very, very much. Go back to the, the first uh, image I showed in, in the student work. I just realized, you know, that's a, like floating park in the city. I mean, that's exciting. So something emotional, some, something uh, spiritual about the nature. I think it's uh, important that nature themselves as a green, because a, now we're talking about the green, sustainable is a, is a different concept. So they take nature as a technical uh, element, but nature can be also spiritual. And another project we are doing in, in, uh, in Rome, um, we have to deal with the, with the history. Here the, there's a block. We, we are going to renovate. <coughs> there's an existing building, and uh, there's a church at the corner, and that's the main building. It's actually a modern building with a, a concrete structure and, and uh, this ugly facade. Um, and this church is not protected. So we cannot uh, demolish the building, but uh, we don't have to be a church in the future. Uh, because for, for this city, they, everything is uh, like thousand years old. Um, but modern building, uh, we, we, this, this building on the left, which we want to uh, renovate, we, we, we want to, what we want to do is to, to take the facade out uh, of the building. The blue part is the modern building, you can see the columns. So the structure is different from the old building. Old building, they all like wall structure, like using stone to build a building. Like, like this building is a wall structure. But the modern building, they use a <coughs> column, so free elevation. So we take out the, the facade, and then we recess the new facade. Then we can create in, uh, a buffer zone on the facade. Make the uh, gardens again. So this time we're trying to make to build actual garden um, into this slabs. But that's a local of the building. Um, this traditional street uh, was formed always by the facade. The facade shaped the street. Uh, here we want the building to be blurred. So this boundary. It's, uh, it's open. 
and this slab is existing. It's a rough, rough concrete slab. But inside we have a new facade. And go higher density. Uh, back in China, there's a, a city called Chongqing. You can see the skyscrapers already. It's all built in 80, 90s. Um, and we're building one tower in the center of this island. And this building is a tall, but it is not only about the height, uh, it's about uh, the life. And we bring a lot of garden into the, into the high rise. And uh, the building, we're trying to blur the shape by by making every floor random. And they're all twisted, they're all like shifted from each other, but they, the, the whole tower doesn't have a clear shape, doesn't have a clear geometry. I think that's a development from the, the tower in the Canada. Canada is a clear sculpture, but here is a, it's a not, it's a not sculpture. <laughs> By blurring the, the shape, overall shape, the, the building become less monumental. It's a not big sculpture. So you, you think, you, you see there's a big thing because it's at the top. But it's not about one strong message. But then go, go inside the tower. You can, you can, you can, you can see a lot of uh, uh, public space, human space, uh, those space, you know, uh, which more about human experience. For example, there's a one garden in the tower. We have a very tight site, so we make a core small. We have a less elevators than they required to achieve e efficiency. I think that's also a good idea because we can we don't need so many elevators. I think we can have a only express elevator bring people to those garden level and then they can just walk a little bit. They can walk maybe two floor up, two floor down, it's not a big deal. But, but the important thing is you, you have a public space in, in the sky. I think that's super important for the high rise. They have this terrace with the sun and they have trees so people can live there. Those are a uh, view from the, the top, you can see the those terraces, the random shapes. <clears throat> I don't know, random is a good word, but I don't know how to say it in English. I mean, I think the, the perfect curve, the perfect the perfect geometry doesn't have a feeling. It's a look like an industrial product. It's, it doesn't express the feeling because in the artworks or paintings, any line cannot repeat. Those lines, um, they're not perfect. They're not it's difficult to describe, to describe by a formula or something. It's a, it's a human. So here we're trying to make a, this mega project come from those random uh, shapes. Here's the development of that idea. Uh, we, we're making this one in Taiwan. Uh, this, uh, this, uh, we just finished this last week, so the, uh, the ugly uh, rendering is uh, it's not uh, so beautiful, but uh, you can see the concept. Here we're trying to make uh, multiple towers, but more important, the connection between towers. You can, you can create this community the urban life in the sky, between the towers, between this uh, uh, jungle-like uh, state. It's actually a street corridor, and the towers on two sides attach the corridor. But, and we have a, only two cores, two elevators, uh, in, in, two, uh, in, in two of the towers. So people has to travel, uh, has to travel in the corridor. We even have a uh, some commercial and public uh, 
program in, the, in this tower, in the middle part and, and the top part. So this can generate a lot of a public uh, activity in the sky. I think that's interesting in, for the high density uh, 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 cities uh, or a towers architecture. Um, not only about the green, but how people experience those green, and how those green can become uh, spiritual or authentic. <clears throat> and the last one uh, project is uh, is a project we call two thousand in two thousand fifty. It's about the future of of our city. It's uh, um, 2050 is not so far. It's, uh, it's a bit far, but we're still alive, probably. Uh, so we can still see this can happen or not. Um, but we have to look at the current situation. This is a Beijing city. You can see those towers. They look very powerful. It's strong. Olympic slogan, faster, stronger. What else? Stronger. So, I don't forget. But uh, I think that's a really um, unnecessary for people to run faster. Uh, you cannot run faster than Tiger. But something human has to concentrate is to, to to concentrate, it's about, is, is this to be the future of our city? I don't know, but we're trying, I think, we should try to make our city not about monu all, all monument for the money and the power and polit politics. So, we think, I didn't think, I just bring my student work to Beijing. So I think I think New York they built this the new World Trade Center which is so ugly and uh, even worse than the original one. You can try in Beijing, but uh, I don't think Beijing wants to build this also. <coughs> but anyway, uh, approach to the nature, to the organic organization, and approach to, uh, to the open green, to public space. I think that's, that was our idea, to provide an umbrella <laughs> to cover other buildings. <laughs> we have a sky park up there. <coughs> um, at Tiananmen Square, used to be very uh, symbolic, concrete plaza. Here is my, my favorite project. It covered the Tiananmen Square with a forest. It's uh, <coughs> all, all green, all trees. It's very easy for us to make this happen, physically, but it's difficult mentally. Um, Many people like this because nobody say no to green, right? Nobody you say I want to plant in trees, nobody says oh, you're stupid. You know, this smart. <laughs> green architecture, sustainable architecture always to be right. But but here, um, those green they, they have different meaning. They meaning uh, openness, they meaning uh, human freedom. Uh, in this space, in the heart of the agency. I think that's important. I think if they can do this, we don't need those citizen, citizen plaza, anti-citizen plaza everywhere, in every city. <coughs> On the left hand is actually the, the opera house. We also covered by trees. It's just a small mountain now. You can still into, go into the mountain to see the opera. And then also the part, part of the research is the old part of the city. <clears throat> you 
can see the this is how we protect the whole part of the city. Outside the wall is a tourist. And uh, people behind the wall they're like actors. Like theme park. Their their condition is not so good. That's a public toilet. That's a public space between cars. So the old city uh, uh, being preserved um, for probably tourist reason. But now a lot of building. I think I think the the way in China, like I, I mentioned before, the space, empty space, courtyard, gardens. They're the soul of the city. They're not a building. You know, those buildings, they're not like Europe, not like uh, stones building. Right? It's very simple building. I think in Chinese Chinese philosophy, building is supposed to die. Right? They have a life cycle. Right? They, the material comes from the earth, and after some years, they disappear. I think that's normal. But what we need to preserve is a life in the city, right? those community, those neighborhoods and the people who live there. But now those people, they're abandoned. Or they kicked out to the suburb. <coughs> you see another toilet there. Public. I remember, I, when I was a kid, I lived in this kind of house. It was amazing. It had trees in, in the courtyard, you had birds. It's, it's really nice. But you have to walk 100 meters to a, a toilet in the middle of the night in the winter. That was horrible. And then we propose uh, to, 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 to insert some bubbles in the hutong, their toilet. Their toilet attached to each house. This is in the future. This is a two, uh, 2050 year, uh, Beijing. So the idea is some uh, corner of space, we can make a different uh, small space inserted. And, uh, <clears throat> and they, 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 will, they will have certain interesting dialogue with the old part of the city. And then I, I think that makes city more alive. And then we built one before 2050. That was uh, interesting about exhibition. You show your virtual image of somebody believes in that image. And, uh, they want to build one. We realize one toilet in one courtyard. So that's the how building look like in reality in the in the this context and the under the trees. It's very small courtyard. That's the entrance at the corner. When you enter you see this uh, um, metal surface and then when you turn you see the courtyard. There's a two building facing each other. Inside the, inside the bubble is the toilet and the stair go up to the roof. The stair. It's a toilet. Smaller bubble, ground. I like this photo. Uh, I like the reflection in, um, um, into the bubble, which which is a mixture of trees, sky, ground, old building, new building. Uh, they, they kind of mix in a weird way and uh, look like a dream. It's not real. Um, also, it's a small, it's very small, and the reflection is not, not can be, the reflection actually make it smaller because the refle reflection also blur the shape of the building. So for me, I, I, I feel this uh, is interesting uh, because it's small. It's only probably four square meter among all the other huge projects we're doing in China. I think it's important to examine this personal feeling, uh, like humans, human scale. So I see this <laughs> like a personal dream of mine. Uh, it's built one probably in the future. Uh, the, the actual goal is to build uh, many of them. So 
so they don't become a declaration for one one employer, but they can be also functional to uh, to this community. So people who live there, they probably feel um, good to stay there. So the community can can be there, and here. It's a view from the uh, new house. Look at the courtyard. It's very small. You have a trees. You, know, you can have a sunshine. You relax here. That's the life uh, we had before. Um, the bubble is there, but it's uh, reflection, reflecting the surrounding the, at the corners. You don't pay attention to the object. I think this space is the soul of the city in which you have uh, your life, your love, your, your family, or whatever. Uh, I think that interests us very much now, in different scale. If you see uh, uh, your painting can transform to a literature, transform to a garden, transform to a penza even on your table, transform to a city like Beijing, transfer to different scale, the same philosophy. I, I see no problem to transfer this idea into a modern cities and big cities in the future. So, we're still trying now. This is the last uh, image. Thank you very much. Questions? I have one question regarding the photos you see. Uh, it's in the, in the district of Mongolia. Yeah. And how, how can you handle this to make a museum for a city without inhabitants? How, how do you handle this step? We don't have a city without having. We have a, what we have is the people. I think people are everywhere. You don't worry about that. Uh, some media says it's empty city, a ghost city, I think it's, uh, I mean, anywhere during construction, there are no inhabitants. Um, but when I go there, uh, near the completion uh, of the museum, every day I see like hundreds of people uh, lying on this landscape, sleep, or yeah. chatting. It's supposed to be a city for one million inhabitants. I don't know. I, I don't see that. I heard it was when I was there first time. They said uh, fifty thousand for that area. But Erdos is a big area. There are several several parts. I think no. I think in general, uh, developing west part of China is a good strategy because uh, now people are focusing on the east coast and big cities, and city become too big, like uh, like uh, Shanghai, Beijing, Chongqing. They're like like uh, 20 million, like for example, Beijing, 20 million people, it's too, too much. The city becomes huge, and from, I, I never go to another part of the city. Like people live in the city, same city, they don't meet each other, so it doesn't make sense. I think developing new area makes sense. Um, but maybe some strategy, detail. I think the, the, the big move is, uh, is uh, it's necessary to build in some new cities. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.